What's going on, everybody? Trev Wilson here from the Bourbon Ranch. I got you, didn't I? You made sure that this was still Bourbon of the Week and not Bourbon Ranch, but Trev will be back for our Bourbon Bomb of the Week. Today, we have Maker's Mark BEP. We're going to talk all about this bottle. This is the wood finishing series. Is it the last of it? You'll have to stick around and talk to Trev about that because he is the Maker's Mark King, but everybody knows before we get started on all of that, time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. We're going to need more. So here we go. We are going to talk about Maker's Mark BEP, but I want to talk about how we get to this particular bottle right here. We start off with just your regular Maker's Mark. All of this is the same mash bill. 70% corn, 16% wheat, 14% malted barley. This is aged about six to seven years. There's no real age statement on that, but that's what we find online. Then we move up into our Maker's Mark cash strength. Same stuff coming out at cash strength. This is 110 proof versus 90 proof. That moves us into Maker's Mark Cash Strength 46. Maker's Mark Cash Strength 46, all they do to this is take your regular Maker's Mark at Cash Strength and then they add French oak staves to the flavor profile, which is how we get Maker's Mark Cash Strength 46, this particular bottle coming in at 110.3 proof. So we start with the Maker's Mark, we move to the cast strength, we add the French oak staves, and then we get the wood finishing series. For this particular bottle right here, they tell you right on here, 10 virgin toasted American oak staves are added to this for another couple months of aging. So if you were like me and you were wondering exactly how this is different from the Maker's Mark lineup, that's how it goes. But today, price, taste, drinkability, you know how we're gonna do it. And then we're gonna send it over to Trev for our Burma Bomb of the Week. Let's get into this 110.7 proof on this particular bottle right here. There's something going on flavor-wise here that's throwing me off, but we're differentiating between flavor, that taste, that spiciness, and the exact ethanol kick on this. So let's try this one more time. I don't really know where I'm falling for this particular glass right here. It's weird. It almost like hits you like it wants to give you a big ethanol kick and then it just never happens. I'm almost like prepping my body for it. The way it hits my mouth, it's like, okay, there's going to be ethanol behind this. And then it just dissipates. It goes away. No real ethanol kick to this at all. 110.7 proof. Not bad. I will give this a very good score when it comes to drinkability. I don't think it's quite in the nines because it is a lower proof and I have been drinking some higher proof whiskey, but I've also been drinking some lower proof whiskey that still drinks a little bit hot. So this is kind of refreshing to have finally a whiskey that drinks 110 proof, but under it. So I will say, let's go like 8.57 when it comes to drinkability on this. And up next, as you know, that's going to get us into taste on this. And I think that's where this bottle is going to, I want to say shine because I do love the flavor profiles, but I will tell you a couple of things in this that I do not like. Now I am comparing this in my mind to some of the other wood finishing series, just off the fact that I have tried BRT0102, FAE0102. I haven't tried the earlier stuff, the RC6 and the FAPTX07 or whatever those were, something Elon Musk would name a child after. But I did try some of the newer stuff more recently, and I was kind of back and forth. Some of them I Loved. Some of them I didn't. Maybe one day we'll be able to try them all in a row. But until then, let's see what we think about this when it comes to taste. Let me get out of the way the one thing that I don't like about this glass first when it comes to taste. When you finish in 10 virgin toasted American oak staves, you're going to get an oakiness on the end of this glass. And I feel like it pulls out a lot of tannic notes that I don't truly love. The only thing that I will say is the oak isn't like a dense oak. It's not a heavy oak. You get more of the sweetness from the oak, which is very good for my particular flavor profile. Mix that with the sweetness that you're obviously getting from the wheat. And there's a lot of sweetness in this glass that I truly love. I just don't like the finish being over oaked and over tannic. I will say I think this is the most indicative of the Maker's Mark line itself. You get so many of those good flavor profiles straight up from the Maker's Mark, and then when you add those American oak staves, you pull out a lot of that sweetness that I truly love. I do think it's the most different of the wood finishing series. Now, again, I haven't had all of them. I would still say as of right now, not trying them side by side. BRT02 might be my favorite, but I'm gonna try this next to the BRT0102, FAE01, and FAE02 if I can still get my hands on the 01. I think my brother-in-law still has that. So I will say that it's very good. A lot of the sweetness on the front, you get more of the spiciness that I wasn't really expecting in the middle. And then again, you get that oakiness, that sweet oak on the end, which is absolutely a great way to round this out. Take a little bit of that tannin off of this and I would love it a lot more, but let's take one more sip and give it a score. Yeah, I mean, you get vanilla on the front of this, you get that spiciness in the middle of this, you get that sweet oak and that tannin on the end. I feel like I'm picking up a hint of chocolate on this as well. Nothing crazy, but it's definitely there in the glass. One more sip. I'm going to go, if 7.0 is average, we're definitely putting in the eights, but how high do we want to go? 
8.26 when it comes to this glass right here for taste. We poured up a little bit more as we get into price on this bottle right here. And price on this bottle is a cool $70. Now let's think about that real quick. Maker's Mark 46 cash strength comes in at 60 bucks. So you're telling me 10 virgin toasted American oak staves for another three to six months is only $10 more. That's not a bad price for this. Now, I've talked about this before and I'm gonna bring it to you, Maker's Mark. If you had these bottles, these seven bottles in this series come out in little four, five, 10, 12 ounce samples and put all seven of them in a set, I guarantee you people would eat that up. I don't know why more companies aren't doing this. Hold back a couple of those bottles until the releases of all of them and then put out the set. You would make so much money. If you do it, I wanna cut, that's all I'm saying. 70 bucks for this is not a bad ask. It's another one of those bottles where they could easily price gouge you already knowing it's coming to an end, possibly, we're gonna talk to Trev about that, and already knowing how good Maker's Mark is and the cult following that it has, they could easily put these out at 99 to $100 and people would still buy them. So at 70 bucks, one sip, we'll give it a price score. Listen, if the taste on this was just ever so slightly a little bit less tannic, I would give this a higher score. 70 bucks, not a bad price. Again, they could definitely price gouge and get more than that. I'm gonna say 8.37 when it comes to price on this. But hey, while I add these scores up, let's send it over to the biggest nerd we know, Trev the Bourbon Wrench. If you're not already following this man, make sure you go over after this and check out his channel and click that subscribe button. He's gonna tell us about a couple misconceptions with the BET and the wood finishing series in general. Cheers. What's going on, everybody? Trev Wilson here from The Bourbon Ranch. Chris, Bourbon of the Week, has forced me, has asked me to come on here and talk about Maker's Mark 2023, the BEP. A little more into the whole end of the wood finishing series line. The good old wood finishing series is coming to an end, at least chapter one. And that's where I'm coming in here to, I wouldn't say disprove any rumors, but to just shed some light onto some stuff that I think people are just looking over or not paying attention to, really. Yes, this is the end of chapter one of the wood finishing series, and Maker's Mark has specifically said there is a chapter two coming. What we have right now is just that, that there is going to be some sort of limited release coming in the future. Everything else is pure speculation. But honestly, there's a lot of cool stuff we can theory craft in, into the speculation. So one, this is the end of chapter one. If we just look at everything that was in the wood finishing line, chapter one, now, what is similar about all of them? Some things come to mind. They ended chapter one with barrel entry proof. Maker's Mark puts all of their stuff in at the same lower barrel entry proof. That's part of theory craft number one is maybe chapter two is gonna be wood finishing at a different entry proof. The Some of the evidence, I wouldn't even call it evidence, just fact of the matter is they have released the DNA series which was different entry proof. So that is something they're obviously willing to do. Maybe they were testing that out. That would be a fun thing. Maker's Mark and different proofs. Second is that the wood finishing itself, maybe they're getting away from wood finishing and they're gonna be doing something else with Maker's Mark. Or three, it could be something entirely different, like different ages, whatever. This is all just theory, but what we do know is that there will be some sort of, you know, limited release from Makers Chapter 2. So stay tuned for all of that. Let's get back into Makers BEP. Let's send it on its way by drinking some good whiskey. See ya, nerds! Listen, I've said it before and I've said it again. Trev is one of the best content creators here on the platform. He goes live almost every Friday night. Make sure you click that like and subscribe button on every single one of his videos. Thank you, Trev, for joining me and giving us that great information. I wouldn't want anybody else talking about Maker's Mark than Trev himself. But this particular bottle, the BEP line, barrel entry proof, 110 barrel entry proof to be specific, comes in at an 8.40, not a bad spot. It's in the top 10 for now because I think we only have five bottles up there so far.
Listen, while we're talking about like and subscribe buttons, why don't we do that here on this channel as well? We passed 5,000, we're going for six next. Listen, Trev talked about a couple of different options that chapter two could bring us. The most interesting one to me and the one I'm hoping for out of the ones he presented is more proof. I wanna see what Maker's Mark tastes like at 120, 125, something like that. I think it would be very fun to compare this wood finishing series and Maker's Mark in general to some higher proof stuff, but we'll have to wait and see what they put out. But hey, in the meantime, make sure you check me out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. Go click that follow button over there. Going for 10,000 over there. Kind of crazy. Make sure you check out our Patreon page and our Discord. Come chat with us 24-7. Both those links in the description below. Make sure you follow Trev, the Bourbon Wrench. I'll leave his link in the description below as well. Go subscribe to him. Make sure you follow him on Instagram as well. Please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly and stay healthy, stay happy. Stay drinking. Cheers, y'all. Damn, it's pretty good.